Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Vince Palmieri. I'm the president and founder of Asian Pacific Community Awareness. And we're here this afternoon with Ryan, who's running for county commissioner. I'm gonna let Ryan introduce himself. Ryan? My name is Ryan Hamilton. I was born and raised here in Las Vegas, Nevada on the east side. Graduated from Chaparral High School. Did some graduate coursework at UNLV. And I'm running for the county commission primarily to stop the decline in the quality of life that people experience here in town. Um, can you please tell our viewers what are the responsibilities of a county commissioner? County commissioner is a local government office. It's responsible for everything from animal control to road work. They're the ones who administer the elections. And in our particular jurisdictions, they fund the police and they uh, do oversight together with the city of Las Vegas for the Metropolitan Police. Uh, they fix potholes, they authorize who can build what where, uh, and in addition to that, they also help manage the health district and the water district, uh, and so it, it's a big responsibility. They control a lot of things that impact your life on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, as a county commissioner, you also have the responsibility of housing development? Right. So i like to ask a question. Um, everybody knows that we have a resource problem here in Las Vegas. Why do we continue building so many homes? Why don't we put a cap on it for a while until our resources start to build up again? Do you have a solution or an idea about this? Well, I can tell you that a cap on growth would be a threat to property values. Uh, you know, if people know that there's not going to be anything new coming to Las Vegas, uh, it will really change the perspective of a, a potential buyer. And so growth is essential to the continued uh, development of our property values. That having been said, there's no reason that it can't be done in a managed and responsible way. Uh, Boulder City is a place that I think has really chartered a smart growth policy. They've definitely slowed it down a little bit uh, to allow for the appropriate use of resources and to protect the quality of life uh, in Boulder City. Uh, I'm generally pro-growth. I think that new people and new businesses in town uh, means new prosperity as well, shared prosperity. But I, I would agree that the management of the growth in town has not necessarily been ideal. Um, you mentioned about new growth in town. And uh, I'm also for growth and progress, but here we have a problem with our education system. We don't have the talent to fulfill certain types of jobs uh, let's say in, in the white collar market, advertising, IT, uh, uh, banking, finance, uh, until we change the education system. As a commissioner, what responsibility do you have towards education? Unfortunately, very little. The county commission doesn't control very much education policy. The state legislature sets the funding. The Clark County School District is who deploys it. Uh, one of the things, though, that I would hope to effectuate a big change in is safety. It's if your kid can't go to school free from the threat of violence, if your teachers can't teach in classrooms free from the threat of violence, it really doesn't matter anything that goes downstream. Uh, so my big impact on education, I hope, would be to empower the police department to ensure the safety of our children. Uh, and that includes making sure their resources are appropriate, and it also ensures making sure that your average line officer knows that leadership at the county level is behind them in what they do, uh, provided they're properly enforcing the law. What is one thing that is your major goal as county commissioner? I would like to reduce the homelessness problem here in the county. It's an existential threat to everything. You talk about attracting new businesses into town and new people. Uh, if you drive up and down the streets of Las Vegas, as you do now, when you see homeless encampments with some regularity, if you see people suffering from drug addiction in the streets, uh, camped out in the front of businesses, and you come from a community like Lincoln, Nebraska, where that isn't a problem, but you're not really discussing it even in your head, should I move here, because you know visually, you know viscerally that you're gonna experience a downgrade in your quality of life. Uh, the resort corridor has identified this as a problem. They've come together with the state, uh, which is not either of their responsibilities to deal with this issue, to fund a $200 million navigation center to try to get people out of homelessness is on the right path. In my view, that's an admission that there's no confidence in the county to get this done. So I hope to, if I could change one thing, it would be uh, to get a handle on the homelessness issue. Right now, it's really easy to be homeless in Clark County. You can live in public parks, 
You can live in the public right of way because they haven't passed a camping ban like the city of Henderson does, and wow. the city of Las Vegas has. Uh, and there's really no law against it. Um, and it's really hard to get treatment, right? Most of this homelessness is related to substance use disorder, chemical dependency, and the uh, follow-on mental illness. And so you need to adjust that equation and make it very difficult to be homeless mm -hmm. uh, and very easy to check yourself into a treatment program to address some of these primary causes that are driving the epidemic of homelessness. I agree with you. I, I come from New York. And I was living in New York when we had Mayor Giuliani. And he cleaned up our homeless problem like you wouldn't believe. Why doesn't someone from this state reach out to him and find out what he did? You know, I'm sorry to say that I don't even, the solutions are so obvious, you really don't even need to reach out to Mayor Giuliani. A Google search will show you all the things you need to know to be successful in this mission. What's lacking at the county commission right now is a vision and a will to clean it up. Democrats in the state legislature introduced a bill to create a homeless bill of rights so that they would be a protected class. Yes, I and remember that. That's how separate the parties are on this issue. And my reality, or my, my view is that the reality is uh, homeless people are suffering in the streets. And the compassionate response is not to leave somebody alone and isolated to succumb to drug addiction. It's to intervene against them uh, and, and their behavior and try to help them get back to sobriety and graduated social stability. Um, I want to mention what uh, a police officer said to me. My organization, we used to go downtown once a month to feed the homeless. And he came over to me one night and he said, Vince, we really wish you guys wouldn't come here. And I said, really, why? He said, you have to understand. We understand that there are people who have a mental problem, but the majority of them here know they're gonna get free food, free clothing, so they keep coming. He said, it's like a cat, a stray cat. If you keep feeding the cat, he's coming back. How can you address that? I mean, there's responsible giving ordinances that are in place in many areas. Some are under litigation by the Supreme Court. There's public marketing campaigns that you can do. Uh, but the reality is the county's job to fix it. And right now, they're not doing anything. And I will say the follow-on from these sorts of uh, regular public feedings, uh, well, then you have people who start to congregate and sleep in neighborhoods where they can expect public feeding or public parks, right? Uh, and then you have waste issues, right? If you own and operate a restaurant, you have to have a bathroom. And there's a reason because the two activities are connected. And there's a litter problem that comes from this. So many people uh, will go into the streets and they'll engage what they believe in is uh, you know, generous behavior. And it's commendable. The intention's good. But they're not thinking about many of the follow-on problems that are the result of uh, that type of behavior. How about... You come to Vegas and run for county commissioner. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I'm, I just bought a house. I'm stuck where I am. Right? But it's part of the big reason why I am running. Where, where I just moved into, uh, not only is the traffic stalled constantly, but we mm. live next to a flood control channel. Oh. And you have individuals who are lighting fires not 15 feet from people's backyards. Wow. You have them camped out on a semi-permanent basis, sometimes less than 50 feet from a school. You have them using drugs, using mm -hmm. the restroom. Uh, and all of these things are, are part of the decline in the quality of life. Before we go any further, I have a friend uh, who would like to ask you a question. Sure. Ryan, <clears throat> how many... Uh, of these homeless or some of these people that are uh, living out on the streets now are illegal migrants and how is that uh, impacting Las Vegas at this particular point? You time? know it's, it's tough to say I'm not sure that any reliable numbers have been produced I mean obviously some just given the vast volume of people who are coming across the southern border at any time what we do know for sure however is that the quantity of very pure, very deadly, and very cheap drugs are coming with the people, and that's what's making it into our community and driving much of the homelessness. Uh, is the local police department aware of this? I'm sure they are. I'm sure they are. Uh, I know that they have units which trace this back. I mean, even the Department of Homeland Security knows that the fentanyl precursor chemicals are supplied by the government of China to cartels. I mean, you right. can Google that. It's not, it's not a secret. Yes. Uh, and so the, the primary thing that we could do, I'm not sure we've been impacted like communities like New York or Denver uh, in terms of the, the people, the individuals, but the drugs are what's driving 
a lot of our street crime, the epidemic of homelessness here. In the last 10 years, uh, we've seen a 620% increase in fentanyl overdose deaths. And that's a direct result of the fact that we have a very porous southern border. Another issue I'd like to speak to you about briefly is water supply. You believe in growth for Las Vegas and you think it's a positive, but do we have sufficient water supply at this point? At the, uh, the current answer is, is probably not, right? Uh, but we need to be smart about new developments coming in. I think we can protect some of the quality of life issues of people who moved here and they live on acre lots and they have an expectation of their quality of life, but already they're eliminating uh, you know, grass from front yards. And the other thing that I would suggest is that the Colorado River Compact needs to be renegotiated in a way that's more favorable to our community, and we need to be assertive about that. Uh, it's kind of ridiculous to me that they wash streets with power hoses in California, and we can't even have a front yard in Nevada. And at the same time, California is returning hundreds of thousands, if not millions of gallons of rainwater into the ocean. Uh, we need an update in our water infrastructure that would permit continued growth in Clark County, and a lot of that unfortunately happens in the other states which are uh, part of the compact. Thank you. Ryan, thank you very much. I really appreciate your time. In closing, why don't you tell our viewers again uh, what district you're running in and what position you're running for? My name is Ryan Hamilton. I'm running for Clark County Commission District A. It's in the southeast and west part of town, and you can learn more about me by visiting friendsofhamilton.com. Thank you, Ryan. Have a good day.